Okay. Provisioning shared storage to ESSI host. So in this video, what I would like to do, I would like to provision shared storage so that we have some shared storage for ESSI hosts so that we can leverage or get benefit, fully benefit of cluster. Okay. Um, why we need shared storage for clusters? Well, as you know, we need a shared storage so that VMs or virtual machines VM DK files which resides on shared storage is accessible from all ESXi hosts so that we can perform vMotion or a cluster can perform DRS in case if there is some resource contention and even in case of uh, high availability or HA let's say if one host goes down and HA need to start VM on another host which of course that it needs access to those VMDK files, right, to start a virtual machine. So it's very important. And uh, I remember somebody asked me this question before: Can I create a cluster uh, without shared storage? Like in previous video, I create a data center and I add three hosts, just as as the, as in as standalone. What if, if I create a cluster and add them and I don't have shared storage? Can I do that? Yes, you can do that. However, you won't be able to utilize any features, I mean, most of those advanced features. Uh, so this is very important to understand that shared storage is required. What kind of shared storage? It totally depends. It could be NFS share. It could be uh, iSCSI, Fiber Channel, uh, you know, uh, it could be Virtual SAN, but there has to be some sort of storage. And that's why I have over here my storage server. And this is my iSCSI target. So here I will provision some alarms for ESXi hosts. It's running Windows Server 2012. And as you can see, it has iSCSI target server as a role. And what I would like to do uh, first. Yeah, sorry, I forgot. I'll go to computer management and to, yeah, initialize disk number two. Mm, okay, I can give it F and let's say we can say we sphere. I have some other drives here as well, which I am provisioning also as iSCSI storage for my Hyper-V servers. Uh, and this one I'll do for vSphere. So, right. Okay, we have a hard drive. Now let's go to iSCSI. And as you can see, I have these three hard drives already provisioned. It's for my Hyper-V servers, from a Hyper-V lab. Uh, but it's not the case here. We need now for uh, vSphere. So what should we do now? Anybody? What's the next step? If I right-click there is a new iSCSI virtual disk option, right? If I go here, this is my server, storage location. I want to use F, right? 
F drive and next specify name of virtual disk name I would say sphere disk one let's say okay and this is the path on F drive it will create a folder by itself called iSCSI virtual disk and then we'll create a VHDX file vSphere disk mm. size what size I would like to allocate I would say 100 gigs okay and dynamic dynamic yeah it's a lab environment and I don't want to allocate all the space at once you know I have limited resources I'll go for dynamic just expand as you need okay now for initiators well I won't use the existing iSCSI ones because these are my Hyper-V server, so I'll create new iSCSI target for them. And I will say vSphere target, which will be this machine. And here I will add IP address of my iSCSI initiators, means IP address of my ESXi hosts. Which IP address? The IP address of those networks which I will use to access this storage and if I'm not mistaken just give me a moment yeah it's these are the IPs I would like to add I would like to go I, I, for lab. I will just create a single pad, and so yeah, two four one up to two four three. Okay, so add IP address one seventy two dot sixty zero dot two four one. And one seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot two four two and one seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot two four three. Okay. So these are my I SCSI initiators. I'm not enabling any authentication and create. Here we go. And we have one disk. Let's create another one from F. I would say vSphere disk 2 this time. Okay, and I would say a hundred again, and I will choose this time existing ones, but vSphere ones, not hyper resurfers. Okay, hokey dokey, and chap, it's all disabled because I use the existing iSCSI target. I defined and inside I defined these initiators and so taking those settings where I don't where I'm not using any authentication create awesome so if I right click one of this disk yeah learn number I will start off with da -da -da -da. What to do? What to do? What, what number? Which number? Let's say 101. How about that? Okay. 
and LUN ID LUN number one two. I don't like to use zero one two three because typically those beginning numbers are maybe in use or you know sometimes can cause confusion. Don't forget that the local hard disk which is attached to ESXi also has a LUN ID of zero. So it's always better to start off with some higher numbers. In some storage, you might find that 0 to 15 are reserved. Yeah. Anyway, enough talking. So now we have this storage here. Right? And what we did here, we added a disk. We formatted a disk. And on this server, basically, what is running? I'm running this iSCSI. Let me just show you here. I'll show you. iSCSI target server role. So I added that in advance. So all you have to do is add the iSCSI target server role. And after that, you will have this iSCSI option. Add the disk. Format it. Assign a drive letter. Then come here. Right click. New iSCSI virtual disk. Select the drive. Create a size. Assign what type of disk you want. I choose for dynamic expansion. Then you can create a ISCAS target group and then you can specify initiator IP addresses as well as if you want in case if you want to configure any authentication you can select authentication options. That's it. And if you want to change the LUN ID, you can just select individual disk, go to properties and change the LUN ID. That's all. So right now, all good. From storage side, we are ready. We have invited, I would say, uh, ESXi host to come and grab it. So now it's up to our ESXi host to connect and see those loans. But that requires configuration, isn't it? Because so far, only one IP is assigned to our ESXi host on one of the NIC, which is a management. IP. So in next video, we will configure further networking and we will make our ESXi servers ready so that they can come and connect to this iSCSI storage and utilize this shared folder. All right. So this is it. Um, I'd like to see you in another video. Take it easy.